And so May 11th, I distinctly remember, is when Atlanta shut down or when the, you know, when um, May 11th of 2020 is when everybody said, okay, we're shutting down, we're going home. And I remember, I used to live in Chicago at the time, so I was commuting between here in Chicago. Uh, from the car, I called our chairman. And I said, uh, his name is Charlie, and I said to Charlie, I said, Charlie, you know, I understand that, um, you know, we've got a pandemic, nobody knows what's happening in capital markets, nobody knows, you know, what's happening with, with the banks, what's gonna happen with our business, right? All this uncertainty. And I called him and I said, look, if at this point you think, because we had not made any announcement, nothing was public, uh, there were only a very small group in the board, well, I guess the board knew, but very small group that knew about this. And I said, if, if you think we should wait till the end of the year or till next year and let the current CEO be there because you need a, you know, you would want a, uh, an experience, a stable hand on, on the steering wheel, I'm fine with that. Like, I'm not going to like run and quit just because, you know, we've delayed something. And, and I distinctly remember Charlie's word. He said, no, the board had made a decision and we were confident in our choice and we're going to move forward. Uh, so. I, I did definitely have that moment where I thought, okay, you know what, this pandemic, nobody knows how it's gonna, how it's gonna pan out. And now you're, now you're here, you're through I'm it. I'm here, yeah, yeah. So let's go to year two. Yeah. Any learnings in year two? What, what, what did you learn as a CEO in year two that maybe surprised you? Well, so, you know, very early on, what we decided as a management team that we were gonna prioritize the safety and well-being of our employees. That was very, very high on our priority list. And we wanted to make sure, you know, we sort of had three three objectives, right? One, let's make sure the safety and well-being of our of our employees. Second, let's just make sure that our service levels don't fall for our customers to the best of our ability. Obviously, we were not gonna put the reason we put our employees first is because we never wanted to put any of our employees in harm's way, right? So yeah. so that was number one, followed by customer excellence. And the third was to make sure that we maintain and strengthen the financial aspect of the company or the balance sheet of the company. So those were the three objectives that we that we set out. And, um, you know, year two, I would say that as we reflected back and we had really good results in, in year one, I mean, we were down in terms of revenue compared to what we were in the prior year and we were down in terms of earnings, but, but the health of the company in terms of our balance sheet, in terms of what our customers said about us, in terms of how our employees felt was really good. And that was a reaffirmation that that to me, those three things that I just talked about are not just relevant when the times are tough, like we had during COVID, but those are three things that should be universal. So we established those three things as our universal priorities, right? Priorities of the business change, you wanna grow some places, you wanna shrink some places, you wanna improve profitability, you wanna transform the business. Those priorities change and shift, and you can call them operating priorities. But to me, these three things became universal priorities, right? Prioritizing our employees, prioritizing our, our customers, and then maintaining the, the financial health of the company as those three things sort of became the universal priorities. Like, that's never going to change. And when you say it, it sounds like that's the batting order. Is that, that right? That is the batting order. That's okay. exactly okay. right. Okay. Okay. Because I think that the third, which is the financial stability, if you do the first two right, the third automatically follows. Is it hard to keep those in that priority? It is. It can be hard, right? Because you can get... Um, you can get distractions that come from different places, right? You can have a customer who wants you to do things that may not be in the best interest of your employees. You can have um, financial stakeholders who can put pressure on you to do things that may not be in the best interest, long-term best interest of your customers or your employees. So it can be hard, but I think by defining those three and keeping them in my aperture every day and the aperture of the leadership team, I think it makes it, makes it better.